Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Military vessels need to remain underway for extended periods, independent of fixed bases for supplies. However, at the same time, supplies need to be replenished effectively to ensure continuity of operation. Meticulous planning and coordination are done months before their deployment to ensure the vessels receive their supplies, be it from another vessel or dropped from the sky above. Submarines can stay submerged under the sea surface for a long time. Especially nuclear-powered submarines that are only limited by the food supply and crew morale. The cramped space in the submarines doesn't give much storage allowance, so it carries supplies to last roughly about 90 days, and it will resurface to be replenished in the open sea. Due to the limited space inside the submarine, the packing of their supplies is discarded, and everything is cramped into a container to be delivered. Mounted on a pallet, the supply is secured to the floor of the C-17, waiting to be airdropped at a rendezvous point. Due to the compact size of the supply, it is released via the side door of the Globemaster instead of the aft ramp. Connected to the static line, the parachute that slows down the descent of the supply is deployed upon exiting the cabin. Create. Four, three thousand, okay. No way, four thousand. <laughs> The Joint Precision Airdrop System on the C-17 helps the pilot compute the exact airdrop release point, considering the altitude, wind direction, and speed of the Globemaster. This provides a more accurate landing of the cargo on the sea surface within the targeted landing zone. The crew will then scramble to retrieve the airdropped supply that is now a few hundred feet away. Today, aside from using transport aircraft like the C-17 or helicopters to send supplies to the submarines, The U.S. Navy has been testing drone technology to resupply submarines in the open sea. Small quad rotator drones have successfully delivered small items or equipment to the battlefront, and this technology is constantly improved to carry heavier payloads. Effective replenishment of military ships is highly dependent on advanced planning by the Tactical Command Officer and the Underway Replenishment Group, or URG Commander. Planning starts when the ship's sailing schedule is confirmed. All engines back one-third. All engines back one-third aye. The tactical commander issues a set of instructions about the order in which the ships will go alongside each other and a tentative speed and course of travel, taking into consideration cooperation from Mother Nature. This is the most common form of replenishment, known as alongside connected replenishment, or CONREP. This is used for transferring fuel and water, along with the ammunition and other supplies needed to keep the ship afloat and the operation running.
The operation begins with the supplying ship holding a steady course and speed between 12 to 18 knots, and the receiving ship comes alongside the supplier ship, maintaining a parallel position. All commands are directed from the supply ship. 600 yards, one and a half minutes. Next course is 312 degrees. A gun line or pneumatic line thrower is fired from the supplier ship, which is used to pull across a messenger line. This line is used to pull across other equipment, such as phone lines, distance lines, or other equipment. This operation is risky, as two or more ships need to maintain the same speed and course for an extended period of time. Pressure changes in the water can also cause a suction, resulting in collisions between the two vessels. The risk is bigger when two receiver ships are being supplied at the same time. Consequently, in case of emergency, breakaway procedures are in place, selected and trained to handle such situations. Another common replenishment process, followed by military vessels, is the vertical replenishment, or VERTEP. The supplier ship uses several helicopters to transport the cargo and place it on a receiver's ship. The flight deck crew directs the placement of the load on the receiver ship. The load is lowered slowly onto the flight deck and is either released manually by the crewmen on board or automatically using the helicopter's cargo release unit. The advantage of this system is that the two ships are apart from each other, eliminating the risk of collision. Military vessels are replenished while sailing. So what about cruise ships? Do they get replenished in the middle of the sea too? There is very little time to load supplies into a cruise ship when it docks in port, usually just a few hours. Unlike military needs, their supplies are mainly food and beverages, amenities, hospitality, marine products, and passenger luggage. For everyday supplies, each day the ship recovers consumption data and feeds it into a software that forecasts the supply and regulates the consumption of supplies on the ship. This tells the crew how much of every supply they need and how much is sufficient to keep them running till the next port. Replenishing happens at turnaround ports where passengers are offloaded. Local vendors supply produce and frozen proteins like meat, hotel supplies, and marine products used to keep the ship functioning. All refrigerated in containers packaged under three categories, dry goods, hotel, or marine. The three are stored in different spaces on the vessel. There has been focused development, and continuous efforts are put into developing an even more efficient process for the continuous replenishment and supply of these giant bodies anywhere in the sea, both for military and civilian vessels. Though the element of danger still lingers in some parts, it is undeniable technology has significantly helped in making it safer and will continue to make it better in the years to come. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. 
See you next time.